Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's grade six, unit one, lesson 10, practice problem review is on bases and heights of triangles. Let's use different base height pairs to find the area of a triangle. In problem one, for each triangle, a base is labeled B. Let's look at those bases real quick here. We have this base here, this base here, and this base here. Now we're being asked to draw a line segment that shows its corresponding height and use an index card to help you draw a straight line. Well, I don't have an index card here on this iPad that I can show you, but if you were to draw in a parallel line here to the base that goes through the vertex for each of these, okay, I'm just kind of eyeballing these here, then what you have almost looks like kind of similar to your parallelograms. But what you could do then is connect these at a right angle. And those would be examples for your heights. Now, those aren't the only ones you could draw in. You could draw in a height over here too. You could draw in a height over here. You could draw in a height over here. The key is looking for those right angle connections. Let's look at question two. Select all triangles that have an area of eight square units. Explain how you know. Well, let's find the areas. In A, my base and my height meet at a right angle right there. My base is 4. My height is 4. And if I take area equals base times height and divide by 2, I would get 4 times 4 divided by 2 is 16 divided by 2, which is 8 square units. So A works. In B, I have a base here that I'm going to call 4. And if I look at this parallel line to my base, I can draw in a height straight down here that is also 4. Well, I already solved that right there. And so B will crank out a solution of 8 square units as well. What about C? In C, if I label this side my base, this time it's only 3, though. And then if I'm looking at my height, I draw in this straight line coming down at the right angle of a height here. And that was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Well, I have different numbers here. Don't automatically dismiss that, though. If area is equal to the base, 3 times the height, 5, divided by 2, I would get 15 divided by 2, which is 7.5 square units. That's not 8, so it's not C. What about D? Well, if I have a base here, that's 4. If I draw a parallel line up here with the vertex to that base, I can then drop this down, this height down and extend my base out so it meets at the right angle. Here my height is also 4. Again, solve that in A and somewhat in B, and so A, B, and D right now are our solutions. If we look at E, I have a base here, and that base is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then Again, drawing in a parallel line, my height is 2. Again, don't dismiss this just because it's not 4 and 4. It still could have an area of 8. And so when I take base, 8 times height, 2, and divide it by 2. My area is 16 divided by 2, which looks very familiar because, once again, it produces 8 square units for my area. 
So E is the solution as well. So all the triangles that have an area of 8 square units, we have A, B, D, and E. Let's move on to question 3. Find the area of the triangle. Show your reasoning. If you get stuck, carefully consider which side of the triangle to use as the base. Well, I'm going to carefully consider a side that I can count. And of the three sides of the triangle, one of the ones I can easily count is what I'm coloring in blue here. Base doesn't have to be bottom, right? So this could be my base. And it has one, two, three, four, five, six units for my distance. Now, if I draw in, looking at this vertex here, a parallel side. Again, the index cards can help with that if you're using that. I can draw in a height now that connects this, where this height is one, two, three, four units. And if area equals base times height divided by two, six times four divided by two is 24 divided by two, which will be 12 square units for the area of the triangle in question three. Question four, can side D be the base for this triangle? If so, explain which length would be the corresponding height. If not, explain why not. Well, here is D. What we've been doing so far is extending using the vertex, a parallel line out here. That's parallel to the base. And then looking, do we have a side that connects these two at a right angle, or a distance that connects these two? And what I'm coloring here with G is exactly what we're looking for. So can side D be the base for this triangle? Yes. If so, what length would be the corresponding height? G. Five. Find the area of this shape. Show your reasoning. Welp. If I bring in something down here, in here, here, and here, Here and there, I'm going to have a somewhat complex shape, huh? Well, if I call this shape A, 1 for the base, 2 for the height, and so for A, area is going to equal base times height divided by 2. So 1 times 2 divided by 2 is 2 divided by 2, which gives me an area of 1 for A. In B, Again, I have a 2 by 2 square. And so for B, this is going to be just length times width, or side squared, which is 2 times 2. Whoa, got ahead of myself there. 2 times 2 is 4. All right. C. As you can see here, I have a base of 2 and a height of 2. And so for C, we're going to do base times height divided by 2 again with the triangle. And so we're going to have 2 times 2 divided by 2, which is 4 divided by 2, which is 2. All right, moving right along. In shape D, that's hard to see. Try this way. In shape D, I see a parallelogram with a base of 2 and a height that meets of a right angle of 2. So for D, area of a parallelogram is base times height, which will be 2 times 2, which is simply 4. All right, well, what about E? That bottom triangle, it's 1 by 2 again. Wait a minute. I already did a 1 by 2 triangle here in A. So area of E is also 1. What if I call this one F? Well, F is a 2 by 2 square, and I already did that as well, so that's the same as B. And then lastly, I have 
G here, which is a two by two triangle. And I already did that here in C. And so, if I take to get the final answer here, and again, this is just one way of doing it. Shape A plus shape B plus shape, shape C, add it to D, and then add it to E, add it to F, and add it to G. I've pieced together this puzzle. So A was 1, so was E. B was 4, so was F. C was 2, so was G. And D was 4. And so now if I add these together, 1 plus 4 is 5, plus 2 is 7, plus 4 is 11, plus 1 is 12, plus 4 is 16, plus 2 is 18. So the area of the shape is 18 square units. And again, multiple ways of going there. That's just the way I picked. Now, in question six, on the grid, sketch two different parallelograms that have equal area. Label a base and a height for each and explain how you know the areas are the same. Well, what if I did a three by four rectangle. Isn't a rectangle a parallelogram? Well, it is. And area for parallelograms are base times height. Four times three is going to get me an area of 12. Now, I called four my base and three my height. Again, you could literally count the squares here. There are 12 of them. What happens if I want to draw a slightly different parallelogram? But again, I'm going to want a base of 4. And this time I still want a height of 3. But I'm going to draw this just a little differently. I'm going to bring it out this way. Now, we've learned that area is equal to base times height. And so once again, 4 times 3, which once again is 12. But remember what we used to do here. We could take this part of it, that piece of the triangle, and we could move that over here to this part. With that being moved, what happens? We create a rectangle that happens to be 4 by 3. A way to prove and explain how you know the areas are the same. And that is it for this Grade 6 Unit 1 Lesson 10 Practice Problems Review on Bases and Heights of Triangles. Good luck!